In this video, I will show you how to make a six channel remote control for model vehicles. This remote control circuit, suitable for beginner model airplanes, can also be used for model boats and cars. On the other hand, there are some conditions for drone use because this receiver only supports PWM signal. An external PWM to SBUS converter module is required for drone controllers with SBUS protocol. It works directly with controllers that support PWM, such as KK2, without the need for an extra module. You can prepare the PCB required for the circuit yourself at home. You can find many educational videos on how to make a PCB. The necessary PDF files are below the video. If you don't want to do it yourself, there are also commercial organizations that provide PCB preparation services. In this case, you will need Gerber files. There is a link to the necessary files under the video. I drilled the pinholes of the PCB with the mini bench drill I designed. You can watch a video about it on my channel. I drilled the PCB holes with a 0.9 millimeter bit for normal pins. The pins of the regulator integrated are much thicker. I used a 1.2 millimeter bit for them. I prefer PS4 analog joysticks for transmitter control levers. I have used cheap Arduino joystick modules for four-channel RC circuit before, and I tested it with a simple model airplane. However, their sensitivity was very insufficient. It was very difficult to control the model. Control sensitivity is very important, especially for model airplanes. PS4 joysticks are sensitive enough, and I think they are the right choice for this kind of remote control circuit. NRF24 modules work with 3.3 volts. In order to work safely, they must be supplied with a stable voltage. For this, I added a voltage reducer to the transmitter circuit. And the function of the LM11117 linear regulator is to reduce the output voltage to 3.3 volts. Channels 5 and 6 operate in an on-off mode. That's why I used two position toggle switches. The link for the transmitter code you need to upload to Arduino Nano is below the video. The NRF24 module I use is the version with a metal case. The metal cage filters out noise and provides stable operation. In addition, this version can operate at 100 milliwatts power in transmitter mode. This power allows us to achieve long range. The wireless connection between the transmitter and receiver is made via the 2.4 GHz frequency band thanks to these modules. In the receiver circuit, as in the transmitter, I used two 15-pin female headers for the Arduino Nano. You can solder the Arduino directly to the circuit board, but using a header allows you to remove and use it when you need it in a different project. I will use male headers for channel outputs. Each channel requires a group of three pins, signal, VCC, and GND. The receiver's NRF24 module needs a regulator, as in the transmitter, to operate stably. In the voltage-lowering regulator circuit, electrolytic capacitors perform normal filtering, and ceramic capacitors filter more precisely and prevent voltage fluctuations. We define the NRF24 module as a receiver, its power is limited to 20 milliwatts.
Therefore, using high-powered ones for the receiver is unnecessary in terms of range. But an extra advantage of high-powered ones is that they are metal-cased. The metal cage filters out electrical noise and provides a more stable connection. I do not recommend the versions without antenna for receiver or transmitter, because their real range is very short. A version with a fixed antenna or an external antenna like the one I use may be preferred. To test the remote control circuit, I will connect servos to channels 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, and ESC to channel 3. The power for the receiver circuit and servos is provided via the BEC output of the ESC. Many ESC versions have a built-in voltage reducer identified by the names BEC and UBEC. The output voltage is usually between 5 and 6 volts. Therefore, no external power supply is required. I chose a low capacity 7.4 volt battery to power the transmitter. The reason I chose it is that it is small, light, and has sufficient current power. The first four channels can be controlled proportionally with the left and right joysticks. In other words, we can transmit the command to the ESC or servo at the speed and amount we want. The speed and position of the movement applied to the joystick arm are decisive. We can also ensure that the movement stops at the desired position. On the other hand, the toggle switches that allow us to control channels 5 and 6 only work in an on-off mode. So, they allow a servo to move fully right and fully left. We may need to change the direction of motion of the servo when conditions require it. Below the transmitter code, there is a control line for each channel. At the end of the line is true or false. To change the direction of movement, you must replace true with false, or vice versa, true instead of false. Once you make this update, when the arm is pushed to the right, the servo will move in the other direction. When making control settings for model vehicles, it may be necessary to change servo travel limits. In some cases, we may need to reduce and sometimes increase. Below the receiver code are lines containing the map command. These lines contain four numerical values that determine the limits. The last two allow us to set the start and end limits of the travel. The default values are 1000 and 2000. If we update the last two values to 700 and 2400, we can get a movement of approximately 180 degrees. In normal case, when RC signal is lost, servo continues to maintain its final position. If there are two slash characters at the beginning of the code line, this feature is disabled. To activate the FISAF function, it is enough to delete these two characters. 127 is the default value, and it refers to the center position. You can change this value according to your needs. The value range can be between 0 and 255. Let's turn off the power to the transmitter to simulate the signal loss so we can observe the servo moving to the desired position. Activating the failsafe function for throttle control is necessary for safety. When the signal is lost, the motor should stop and the model should not move away. The joysticks I use have a spring mechanism and they stay in the center position when free. For one-way ESC, the arm must stay in the zero position. Otherwise, the motor will spin at medium speed. I had to solve this problem with code. For this, I made the necessary adjustments to line 58, which contains the data throttle command. Thus, the motor does not run when the arm is free. For bi-directional ESC control, disable line 58. To do this, you must add two slash characters to the beginning of the line. Then you need to activate line 59. Simply delete the two slash characters at the beginning of the line. The second and third numerical values in the relevant line affect the signal start point and end point for the ESC. If your motor is not working, you can obtain the correct start signal for your ESC by changing these values. The values should be in the range of 0 to 1023. Connecting a servo to the relevant channel output and observing the movements will be useful to observe the effect on the result. As an alternative to the LiPo battery, 
2 series connected 18650 class Li Ion or 5 AA size batteries can be used. I do not recommend this type of 9V batteries. The current they provide is not enough for NRF24 modules. Insufficient current may cause the circuit to not work or to work unstable. The same pairing key must be used for the pipe out command in the transmitter code and the pipe in command in the receiver code. If you use more than one remote control circuit in the same environment, the commands will be mixed up. To prevent this, you need to differentiate the pairing key for each transceiver set. The frequency band of NRF24 modules is 2.4 GHz. The frequency channel can be changed when necessary to prevent frequency conflict with different devices. To change the channel, a value between 0 and 125 can be assigned. For example, if the value 100 is applied, the frequency value will be 2.5 GHz. The frequency band can be minimum 2.4 GHz and maximum 2.525 GHz. Thank you for watching. You can support my channel by subscribing and liking my videos.